You know, sometimes it feels good to mark a book off the old bucket list. Hey everyone, welcome back to Andrew's Wizard of the Reads, and as always guys, I'm Andrew, and today guys, today I have got another book review for you, but before we get to that book review, make sure you're liking and subscribing, hitting that bell notification so you can get regular updates when I put out new content. Also, make sure you're checking that description box down below for the link to the Wizardly Duo Discord, as well as links to all my social media and information about my Patreon. And guys, this is, this is one that has been on my bucket list for going on 15 years. And that is Stephen King's The Stand. This is a Mylar cover. It's very, very reflective. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do. But I promise that this book is The Stand. Uh, it's just an aftermarket dust jacket. Uh, that said, guys, um, I remember first starting to try and read this back when I was 18. I'm 32, so I guess it'd be 14 years now. And uh, I remember the opening scene very vividly, even from way back then. Like, when I, like, picked it back up, I was like, oh, yeah, I easily remember this opening scene. Guys, this is a absolute legendary masterpiece from the man himself, Psy King, Stephen King, King of Horror. And uh, it was released initially in 1978 with 400 less pages than what this bad boy has, because this is clocking in at, I think... 1,154 pages. And uh, for that reason, it can be rather intimidating. But uh, guys, I'm here to tell you that the experience is worth it. Now, how did I get through this? Well, I didn't read this big copy because A, it's heavy. In fact, it's so heavy, we're just gonna set it right there. Uh, <laughs> I did the audiobook experience. Uh, I did my Libby through Over Overdrive, through my local library, waited four weeks, got a copy. Absolutely enjoyed the experience. The narrator, narrator is fantastic. I'll pop his name right there because I don't remember it off the top of my head. But guys, like, uh, hey, the audiobook is 48 hours. So again, it attests to the length. And I can't promise this isn't going to be a ramble review. This is mostly going to be non-spoiler uh, because I do want to do a panel discussion on the stand. I have yet to reach out to people, but I would absolutely love to get uh, some people that I have in mind on the channel to talk about this absolutely awesome book. Uh, again, initially published in 1978. This version is from 1990, uh, where he went back in and added 400 additional pages, uh, even, I think, added in some characters who had been cut, one of which I wish had stayed cut. Uh, if you know who I'm talking about, you know. I'm just going to say the kid. I would wish the kid hadn't made it back into the book. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, some of these chapters are incredible incredibly long. I believe at one point, I think some of the chapters are 12,000 words long, which is just absolute insanity. But why am I doing a dedicated non-spoiler review for The Stand? Well, I gave it like a 4.75 out of 5, which just rounds up to a 5. I really, really enjoyed this experience. Uh, and basically, it is dealing with a post-apocalyptic, post-pandemic world. Uh, no, not that pandemic. Again, 1978. Uh, this is from a, a, a weaponized version of the flu that the American military was creating, and then the protocols didn't quite kick in in time when there was a leak, and somebody got out, and it was so virulent that it goes ahead, and I think it, they say it wipes out like 94.5 or 96% of the population, and we just kind of are left with this desolate America and a group of people who are really trying to just survive and get by. The book is broken up into three parts. Uh, but part one and part three were my favorite. Part two is where King starts to do his kind of slice of life thing. Uh, and the fact that it shows that he was doing that back in 1978 uh, just goes to show that that's his style. And if you don't like his slice of life stuff, uh, this is probably not going to be for you. Uh, because, I mean, don't get me wrong, it is in a post-apocalyptic setting and so you know you don't have electricity you don't have any of that stuff and so we see these characters kind of trying to cope and it's a very large cast of characters so i am probably i'm doing this all off the top of my head i am probably going to forget some of their names so we've got three protagonists uh we've got larry Stu, and nick and um, what's really interesting about these is uh Stu is there at the initial incident 
So basically, when we start on this book, we are on a military base. And this man kind of bursts into his wife's house. And he's just like, it's hit the fan. The wind's blowing this way. We need to get out of town so we don't get sick. Well, it's so virulent, he's already sick. And so he snatches up his little girl, his wife, and they hop in a car and they start driving. And then about two days later, they this man crashes into some uh, gas pumps and Stu happens to be there. So we meet Stu very early on in the book. Uh, then we have Larry. Larry is a, I think he's a rock and roll artist. Uh, and he releases this kind of hit single, uh, Baby Can You Dig Your Man. And uh, it starts climbing up the charts and stuff. And he starts party hardying and he's doing drugs and he's throwing parties and he blows all of his advance money. And he goes to live with his, mo live with his mother and he's there, I believe, in New York City when, uh, you know, the pandemic just hits. And then we've got Nick. And I forget where Nick is, but when we meet Nick, Nick is mute and he is deaf. And basically he has been jumped by some just local, good old, good old boys in the local town. And they have jumped him, they've beaten him up, and he is discovered by a sheriff. This sheriff kind of takes him in, patches him up, and then deputizes him when he gets sick. And so then Nick is just kind of stuck here, uh, kind of babysitting these people. And so that's kind of how we meet these characters. And then we have two factions within the book. One is led by Mother Abigail, who is, I think, like a hundred and I'm going to say like 106 years old. And then we've got Randall Flagg. This book is the introduction to Randall Flagg, who is an antagonist who pops up throughout Stephen King's multiverse. And so Randall Flagg is very, very creeper, creepy. And he's kind of got these kind of superpowers and stuff like that. He, these magical abilities. Um, and he's kind of like the Antichrist. And we get these two factions. One sets up in Vegas and one sets up in Boulder. And, you know, kind of, it, it takes the whole approach of if you've got two factions that aren't really speaking to each other, and it's kind of this post-apocalyptic setting, and then we kind of just spread a little bit of misinformation there, and we pit them against each other, will they go to war? And it's kind of this kind of interesting aspect, because I don't think, like, don't get me wrong, not everybody in, in the Boulder Free Zone is good people, but not everybody in the Las Vegas um, kind of area or bad people. It's not so cut and dry as good versus evil, even though that's the way that this is presented to us. One of the things that The Stand does very, very well is secondary characters, because obviously we are dealing with a very, very deadly disease, and we are introduced to all of these characters that you love, and Stephen King is not afraid to just kill those people. He will kill them off page, he will kill them on page, I mean, there is a lot of characters that you fall in love with really quickly. You're like, oh yeah, this is great. And then they're dead. And that's just, it hurts. It hurts when you lose these characters. But uh, yeah, no, I, I really, really loved this experience. Uh, another character who I have to speak about is Francine Goldsmith, or Franny. Uh, Franny is this kind of woman who has, you know, she went to college, she got pregnant, she was on the pill, the pill failed her, and she is trying to figure out what to do with her life because she wasn't planning on getting pregnant. And then this pandemic happens. And, of course, you know, uh, what happens is, you know, they, they don't know what's going to happen with the babies. They don't know how they're going to repopulate this world. Everything is just kind of up in the air. They don't know. They don't have any electricity. Uh, but don't worry, gas and food is in abundance because... Frankly, the population has decreased so much that there is enough in abundance to carry them through for quite a while uh, while they try and figure things out. Now, growing up, I always thought that The Stand was going to be this giant horror novel. And it's really not. It's more about um, opposition and survival and living in a post-apocalyptic world rather than a horror novel. There are some horrific elements, there are some shocking moments, but there's nothing in there that I think I would really point a finger at and go, you know, that's really, really scary or really, really horrific. Now, don't get me wrong, if I was in the situation of these characters, I'd be crapping my pants. So, again, it's all subjective of, you know, what you define as horror. 
But uh, another couple characters that come to mind. I, I have mentioned the kid, and uh, then there's of course Trash Can Man. There's Poke, and oh, what's his name? Uh, they they kind of do go on this tri-state uh, crime spree. Uh, Poke and this other character. Uh, so they're very interesting to follow uh, when the pandemic hits and everything like that. And then uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of fantastic fantastic characters and it's really hard and in fact i know stephen king uh, went on record and said it was hard for him to kind of write this story it took him a long time because the cast of characters is so large uh, i have heard some people criticize the uh, ending as you know being kind of weak i didn't mind it i actually liked the ending here uh, i thought it was rather explosive i thought it was really 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 good and, you know, where we start, you know, we start in this very just vanilla world where people are living their lives, the pandemic hits, people start dying, and then, of course, when people start dying, martial law gets implemented, and then, you know, even more people start dying, misinformation gets spread, people panic, it is truly a masterpiece on just watching these dominoes fall to see how we got from point A to point B. And then where point B starts off is, you know, kind of where we've got all our survivors. And then all of these survivors start trying to have, they start having visions of, you know, these two individuals. And they start gravitating towards them and building these communities in Las Vegas and in Boulder. And then start trying to figure out, well, what does a post-apocalyptic society look like? Do we have laws? Do we have rules? You know, can you just take whatever you want? Uh, can you do whatever you want? Can you walk down Main Street and smash a bunch of windows uh, while roaring drunk? Who's going to stop you? There's no cops. And just kind of trying to figure this all out and come out the other side. It is, it's something really special. And I can see why this is a masterpiece. Last I looked up, when I started reading this, uh, it sold 4.5 million copies. Uh, there are 4.5 million copies of The Stand in circulation. And I think that's really awesome this now makes i think 11 2263 it the stand the shining all five star books for me i really am starting to fall back in love with stephen king uh later we've got drawing of the three we've got the wastelands all great books so i think i am officially going to take my constant reader card and put an official member on there because I am not going to stop reading Stephen King. Uh, I may not do a whole bunch of dedicated reviews, but like I said, I do want to do a full spoiler discussion on the stand. And if you were interested in me doing that on the channel, please let me know in the comments down below. Make yourself heard. I would love to start doing more King content uh, here on the channel. Uh, that said, guys, uh, that's all I've really got for you. I don't really want to spoil a whole lot about this book, but I want to tell you that, you know, it is long, but I think the journey is worth it. I think the audiobook is amazing. I think the characters are really well written. Uh, at certain points, like, you know, with the kid, it goes a little too far, which is kind of why I dock it a little bit. It's got that great slice of life. It's got great ideas. It's fun watching those dominoes tumble. Please check this one out. If you haven't already, that's it, guys. That's all I've got for you. So till next time, peace out. Stay magical. Bye. And as always, I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons.